coming up next on NMZ Live TV. We as believers need to rely completely on the Holy Spirit to convict and convince the unbelievers. Sometimes we as believers, we try to do the work of the Holy Spirit, but it's the... Up next on NMZ Live TV. In Psalm 150, the psalmist encourages us to praise God in the sanctuary. He says, praise Him in the firmament. Everywhere we are, we are to praise God. And I like how he ends that psalm. He says, let everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord. And today we at the New Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church, we are praising God. We are thanking God that you are able to worship here with us today. The New Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church is located at Blue Hill Road, just south of Cowpen Road, on the beautiful island of New Providence in the beautiful Commonwealth of the Bahamas. Our senior pastor is Pastor Alfred Stewart, and I am Pastor Theophilus Claridge, pastor of the Children's Ministry here at the New Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church. Those of you watching us, and even members who may not be able to come out on a regular basis to worship with us. You may want to be able to share in the ministry here at the New Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church. You may want us to come to collect tithe or offering, or you may want to be able to help out the soup kitchen. You may also want to be able to donate to the feeding ministry that we have here at the church, or even to the clothing ministry. You may call us at 1-242-341-1804. That's 1-242-341-1804. You, you may also want to WhatsApp us at 1-242-341-3726. That's 1-242-341-3726. And if you would like to know what's the happenings here at the New Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church, if you just send us a short note via the WhatsApp line, again, that's 1242-341-3726, we can then lock your number in to our WhatsApp line. You can have it saved and you will get updates on a regular basis of the happenings here at the New Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church. You may also email us at new.mount.zion at gmail.com. That's new.mount.zion at gmail.com. We invite you to like us and to follow us on our Facebook and Instagram pages. And for those of you who are watching via YouTube, we also invite you you to subscribe to our new to our YouTube page. And those of you who are watching on YouTube, those of you who are watching on via Facebook or Instagram or whatever platform you're watching us on, if you find this ministry a blessing to you, we invite you to share the, our page and our various social media sites with your friends and family, and you can just use the handle backslash the new Mount Zion. Once you put that in, we will pop up. Today we live in a world where you can be in a crowd, 
or you can be by yourself, or you can even just be somewhere in between and so often we feel lonely. We feel as no matter who is around us, where we're at, we're all alone and that there's no one here with us. Today, the pastor of the women's ministry here at the New Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church is speaking on a topic so fitting in the times we live in now. You are not alone. And for the believer, we know that no matter what we are going through, we have the Holy Spirit living within us. And so as we prepare to hear from Pastor Sharice Evans on the topic, You Are Not Alone, we ask that you enjoy and you worship with our duet, Sister Louise Darvel and Sister Regina Sands, as they minister in song. And following the ministry of Sister Darvel and Sister Sands, Pastor Sharice comes with her message, You are not alone.
As we reverence the word of God. John chapter 14, verse 16, sorry, verse 16. John chapter 14, verse 16. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. I'm sure that the Lord is able to add his richest blessing to the reading and the hearing of his precious word. You may be seated. This morning, I wish to join in with Pastor Claridge in welcoming all of our visitors who are here today in the sanctuary as well as those who are tuned into this broadcast via Facebook or YouTube, I want to say welcome to you as well. Our message this morning is part one of a two-part sermon. This morning, for the allotted period of time, I would like to speak from the topic, You Are Not Alone the role of the Holy Spirit. Look at your neighbor and say to your neighbor, you are not alone. I want you to look at your other neighbor and declare those encouraging words to them. You are not alone. Someone in here this morning needs to hear those words because the adversary, the devil, Satan, Lucifer, the accuser of the brethren and the father of lies has been on your track. He is the one who has been speaking lies in an effort to get you to believe and to accept those lies. He has told some of us that things will never work out for us. But this morning, God has sent me to remind all of us that according to Romans 8 and 28, that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose. You are not alone. He has told some of us that we have been rejected and we are not good enough. But this morning, God wants me to remind you, and like we teach our children in, in the Anglican schools, that you are blessed beyond measure because you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Others have been told that they would never get out of the cycle of depression and discouragement. But this morning, God has sent me to remind all of us 
what he has said in Jeremiah 29 and 11. For I know the thoughts I think towards you, say the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Tell your neighbor that the devil is indeed a liar and the truth is not in him. However, unfortunately, many of the saints have accepted and believed the lies. And as a result, we find ourselves having a pity party. But I believe the Lord has sent me to remind all of us that no matter what life deals you, no matter what curveball is thrown your way, God wants to remind us that we are not alone. Yes, the attack may be so great. Yes, the attack may come one right after the other, like Job experienced. Yes, the attack may come with the objective to knock you off your feet and to cause you to feel as if you are alone. I've come by to remind you that according to 1 John 4 and 4, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Romans 8 and 37, nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Look at your neighbor and remind them just one more time. You are not alone. This morning, you may be wondering, who is this great one that we have inside of us? Well, this morning, I want to spend some time telling you about the great one that Jesus has assigned to every believer. In the gospel, according to John 14 and 16, we find these words. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. In order for us to put this verse in perspective, we need to go back a few chapters in the Gospel of St. John. In chapter 12, we read about the anointing of Jesus' feet by Mary, Mary and his triumphal entry into Jerusalem. In chapter 13, Jesus washed the disciples' feet after the supper had come to an end. He was during, it was during the time that Jesus foretold of his betrayal and denial. In chapter 14, he offered words of comfort to his disciples, telling them, let not your hearts be troubled. Their hearts were indeed troubled because they heard what Jesus had to say. Jesus had to assure them that even though I'm leaving. I don't want you to be troubled. He also gave his disciples power of attorney to use his name. Now in verse 16 of chapter, four, chapter 14, it says, I will pray to the Father, and he shall give you another comforter. Look at your neighbor and say, another comforter. That he may abide with you forever. Why would Jesus need to pray to the Father for another comforter. He was getting ready to be crucified. He was getting ready to make the payment that was required for the redemption of mankind. And as a result, would believing his disciples to go back to his father. Now, let's just stick a pin and examine this verse. Jesus says he will pray to the father and he shall give you another comforter. Another comforter means another like Jesus. Tell your neighbor, it means another like Jesus. Isn't that good to know that you have another like Jesus as believers? I want you to ponder the fact that you have at your disposal another like Jesus. Let that sink in for a moment. The word comforter is the word parakletos. Say parakletos. And according to Strong's Greek and Hebrew definition, it means an intercessor. 
consoler. According to Thayer's Greek lexicon, it means one who pleads another's case before a judge, a pleader, a counsel for defense, legal assistant, an advocate. Universally, it means one who pleads another's case with one, an intercessor. In the widest sense, a helper, an aider, an assistant. So the word parakletos literally means one called alongside to help. In 1 John 2 and 1, we find these words. My little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. That word advocate in the Greek is the same word for comforter, which is parakletos. The Holy Spirit is another like Jesus. He is not an it or a thing or a force. Look at your neighbor and say he's not an it, a thing, or a force. The Holy Spirit is a person. You are not alone. If you are a born-again believer, you have the Holy Spirit dwelling inside of you. I think I need to say that again. If you are a born-again believer, you have God, the Holy Spirit, living inside of you. Remember in Corinthians, Paul told the Corinthian saints, Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Tell your neighbor, do you know that you have God, the Holy Spirit, dwelling in you? Many of us don't know that. Because if we knew that, we would be careful of some of the places that our feet will find us. We would be careful of some of the words that came out of our mouths. We would be careful of some of the actions that our hands, you know, they had a preschool song. Oh, be careful, little eyes, what you see. Be careful, little hands, what you do. Oh, be careful, little feet, where you go. Why? Because there is a father up above looking down in tender love. Oh, be careful. But I want to rephrase that. Because there is a God within. And we don't want to subject him to some things that he should not see. Some words he should not hear. And some places where he should not go. Tell your neighbor, you are not alone. You are not alone. He's a person. The latter part of the verse says that he may abide with you forever. That he may abide with you. So it tells us that the Holy Spirit lives with us. We are not alone. And what is unfortunate is that even though we as believers have the Holy Spirit dwelling within us as a helper, we live our lives as lone rangers. Tell your neighbor, we live our lives as lone rangers. We do not utilize the Holy Spirit. Let, let me give you an example to help you understand what I mean. Now, in my school, in our ELC department, our Early Learning Center department, which is kindergarten all the way to grade two, our teachers have what we call a teacher's aid, okay? It simply means that the teacher's aid is there to assist the teacher in any way the teacher needs them to assist. If the teacher's running late, the aid will be in place to receive the students and get them prepared to start the day. The teacher will have the aid to her sister as she teach various concepts. The aid will walk around to ensure that the students are paying attention and they are grasping the concept. 
If there is one student who is not sure or looks as if they haven't grasped the concept, the aide will spend some time assisting the student while the teacher may be working with small groups or another individual. The aide is there as the helper to the teacher. The aide will assist during times of recess and supervision of the students. Could you imagine our teachers having aides in the classroom and not making use of their services for what they've been hired to provide? Could you imagine the teacher doing everything by his, him or herself? No, the teacher will be burnt out. The teacher will not be able to receive 100% passes from the students. Some students need to be guided or need individual attention in order to grasp the concept that they may not have gotten. Some students would need to be encouraged to finish a particular assignment at that point so that they won't receive a failing grade. The teacher who doesn't use the assistance of the aides, like I said, will be burnt out or overwhelmed and will not get the student success that they would have gotten if they made use of the service of the aide who is their helper. Tell your neighbor, you have a helper. You have one call alongside of you to help. He has a role to play in the lives of the believers. But unfortunately, like I said earlier, some of us act like lone rangers. We don't utilize the Holy Spirit. We make our decisions on our own. We think that we only need to um, consult the Holy Spirit if it's a major decision that has to be made. I want you to know that the Holy Spirit wants to be a part of every aspect of your life. Not just major decisions that have to be made. He wants to be a part of every aspect of your life. He wants you to wake up in the morning and say, Holy Spirit, which route should I take to work today? Should I take my regular route or should I take another route? The Holy Spirit knows that on your regular route, there may be a traffic jam or there may be an accident and it will cause you to be late for that appointment you may have on the job. He wants to be a part of every aspect of your life. Tell your neighbor the Holy Spirit wants to be a part of every aspect of your life. Verse 17 says, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Here, this verse shows that the Holy Spirit is another like Jesus. He is the spirit of truth. John 14 and 6, we find these words spoken by Jesus. I am the way, the truth, and the life. This spirit of truth is only dwelling in those who believe. 1 John 5 and 6 says, this is he that came by water and the blood, even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the spirit that beareth witness because the spirit is truth. According to verse 17 of chapter 14, unbelievers do not have the Holy Spirit dwelling within them. The Holy Spirit has several roles that he plays in the lives of believers. Verse 26 of chapter 14 says, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring back to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. We can see from Scripture that the Holy Spirit did just as Jesus said. He taught the disciple all things, things that the disciples may not have grasped, when Jesus was teaching it. But after Jesus left, the Holy Spirit gave them divine revelation. And they understood what Jesus meant. 
the Holy Spirit also brought back to their remembrance the things that Jesus said to them. Where's the proof? The gospel, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We have these men who were with Jesus for three years, and they were able to write an account of the things that Jesus said. The Holy Spirit will bring back to your remembrance. And I don't think this is just limited to the word of God. I can testify that when I was in college, I would spend all night studying lots of content. And I would say, Holy Spirit, I need you to help me to remember this. And lo and behold, during the test, if I forgot something, and I say, Holy Spirit, I, you, you need to help me remember this. You said you would help me. And you know, I throw in scriptures at him. Even though that was meant to the disciples, I still applied it to my life today. And guess what? He reminded me of all of those contents that I was learning. All of those things that I was learning in college, he brought it back to my remembrance. And guess what? I was successful. The Holy Spirit wants to be a part of every aspect of your life. I could remember all night studying for polynomials. I couldn't even pronounce the word, and they want me to sit and take this test, polynomials. And I studied all night, practiced those, those different concepts. And I said, okay, I got this down back. I got this A in the bag. When I went and I took the exam, I was so comfortable and said, okay, this A. Checked it. So comfortable. The Holy Spirit said, go back and check again. And when I checked again, careless errors, careless errors. I tell you, the Holy Spirit is a real person. Tell your neighbor, he's a real person. He is not a force. He is not a figment of your imagination. He is a real person. Verse 26 says, but when the comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceeded from the Father. He shall testify of me. And ye also shall bear witness, because ye have been with me from the beginning. In this verse, the Holy Spirit will testify of Jesus and also give his disciples boldness to testify or bear witness of him, even in the face of persecution. Remember in Acts chapter 4, verses 8 through 12, when Peter went before the council. In fact, even before he went before the council, he declared the word of God and he declared it with boldness. And he spoke to the men who were responsible for crucifying Jesus or endorsing that he be crucified. And he looked them in the eye and he was not fearful. The Holy Spirit gave him boldness to declare the word of God. He gave him boldness to be a witness of Jesus Christ. He gave him boldness to bear witness of Jesus Christ. And he's doing the same today. He's giving um, believers all over the world the spirit of boldness to testify even though they are persecuted. In chapter 16, verses 8 through 11, it says, and when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin because they believe not on me. Of righteousness because I go to the Father. And ye see me no more. Of judgment because the prince of the world is judged. This verse pertains to the unbeliever as well as the believer. Let me explain what I mean. Let's start with the unbeliever. The word reprove is the Greek word which means to admonish, to confute. According to Thayer's Greek definition, it also means to convict, to refute, to confute. According to research, it, is all, it also means to find a person guilty or awaken a consciousness of guilt to prove someone of wrongdoing and to expose what is wrong and convince. Westcott puts it this way. He says, whatever the final issue may be, he who convicts another places the truth of the case 
in dispute in a clear light before him, so that it must be seen and acknowledged as truth. The Holy Spirit not only awakens men's consciousness of guilt, but he seeks to turn them to Christ. The Holy Spirit is needed because the world does not believe in Jesus Christ, nor the words spoken by him. Tell your neighbor, the Holy Spirit convicts unbelievers. He causes the individual to see truth. He reveals the need of redemption. This is why it is important for us to pray, especially when we are going out to evangelize. We as believers need to rely completely on the Holy Spirit to convict and convince the unbelievers. Sometimes we as believers, we try to do the work of the Holy Spirit, but it's the Holy Spirit's job to convict and convince the unbeliever. When the Holy Spirit does that, the unbeliever forsakes his life of sin and follows the path of righteousness, which was made available to all through Christ by accepting Jesus' gift of eternal life. Additionally, the Holy Spirit will convict the world of judgment because the prince of the world is judge. According to the King James Study Bible, the power of Christ to judge Satan and overthrow his kingdom took place at the cross and the resurrection. Therefore, is judge means has been judged. Colossians 2 and 15 says, and having spoiled or disarmed principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Verses 13 through 15 of chapter 16 says, How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore said I that he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. Tell your neighbor the Holy Spirit will guide you into all truth. The word guide means to show the way. Figuratively, it means to teach. How will the Holy Spirit guide us as believers into all truth? He will not speak of himself but will speak what he hears from Jesus and will show the believer things to come. He will also guide you in the word of God and bring revelation to you in the word of God. It is the Holy Spirit who reveals to us what is to come. Tell your neighbor, you don't have to be in the dark. You don't have to be in the dark. The word of God says he will show you what is to come. The Holy Spirit is the one who will reveal to us what is to come. And we're going to stop here on today. We're going to pause right here and pick up, whenever I come back, part two of the role of the Holy Spirit. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise for his word on today. It has been our privilege and our pleasure to have you worshiping with us. We know that we live in a busy world. We know that we live in a trying world. And so as we go through this time, we are going to invite you just to allow the Holy Spirit, allow God to take charge of your life. And as we leave, we say the blessings of God be with you, both now and forever. I am Pastor Theophilus Claridge, and it has been my pleasure to have hosted this service from the New Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church today.